Hi everybody, today we're going to work on kind of some quick cleaning tips to keep your trumpet in tip-top shape in between cleanings, you know, like a full bath or a chem clean, uh, you know, by a professional uh, repair tech. Um, but really, you know, if you can keep this, you know, if you can keep your instrument clean all the time, it's going to play better and it's going to work better, at least hopefully. So um, I'm going to go over a few of my favorite products and uh, just some quick, easy methods that you can keep your horn really working at its best. Um, I've got to do a quick shout out. My friend Walt Simonson, uh, you know, really kind of inspired all of this. Several years ago, we were playing in a, in a rehearsal band uh, in, in L.A., and uh, I noticed he was tearing his horn down after every rehearsal. And I said, hey, you know, what's, what's the deal with that? You know, are you a germaphobe or something, you know? And, and he said, he said no, it, it plays better like this. And I said, what, what are you talking about? And he said, you know, if you can keep the air column clean, then, you know, your trumpet's going to be the same size every day. And it's not going to uh, get smaller as you go. I'm going to show a little video clip in just a second. Please, you've been warned. Look away if, uh, if you're easily sick by uh, disgusting things. Um, I had a student several years ago who, uh, let's just say he didn't clean his horn, and uh, we found a little maggot like doing, uh, doing circles inside the lead pipe. So I'll show that clip in just a second. You've been warned, turn away, hide the children. Um, so we'll check that out. And when we come back, I'll show you how to... Make sure that never happens. Okay, so we're back. I'm sorry that that was so graphic, <laughs> but uh, I love that video. I've shown it to uh, students all over the place, young and old. I think once you see that, you're going to clean your horn. So let's start with the simple stuff, okay? Um, get a mouthpiece brush and keep it, keep it near your mouthpiece. Keep it in your case. Uh, Protec actually makes one with a little nubby end, and it it actually just fits inside your mouthpiece. So when you're done playing, bloop, you can just store it in the brush, which is great. Um, I have several of those, but I can't find them right now. So anyway, when you're done playing, or before you play, whatever, but probably when you're done playing, just give it a, a quick brush, just like that. Um, and then it's also a good idea, take it a step further, get some of this stuff. This is the Santa, no, it's the Mighty Mist, excuse me. Um, if you can't find this, just some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. Uh, or some soap and water, just, you know, wash it off. So I, I like to give a squirt in the cup and then a little bit around the rim there. And then if I have a, you know, like a clean cloth or something, I may give it a wipe to just to, just to keep it clean, you know, and wipe off anything. So I'll show you there, or I'll try anyway. Totally clean. And so, again, the idea is we want to keep this the same size every day. So... And you saw how long that took. Let's see. 1,001, 1,002, 1,000. Done. I mean, not even three seconds. So take care of that. Plus, man, that's just gross. <laughs> you know, like all the food, all the flaming Hot Cheetos that you've had. Yuck. All right. So the next thing, um, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with like really basic tools and then we'll start, we'll talk about kind of some fancier stuff that I like. Uh, but just basic cleaning snake. I mean, this one's probably past its prime, but whatever. Keep this in your case, right? And then when you're done playing, it's as simple as this. Pull your main tuning slide out and then take the snake and just, just brush the tuning slide. Um, and, you know, the tuning slide is going to get a lot of the water out. Sorry, the uh, cleaning snake is going to get a lot of the water out, which is good. You don't want to leave the water in there. Uh, but it's also going to loosen up any any kind of foreign, you know, objects that got in there. You know, more Flamin' Hot Cheetos or whatever y'all are eating. Uh, and then the next thing is, of course, I like to run it through, you know, the uh, the lead pipe of the trumpet. So I'll kind of run it, run it that way and that way. Okay, so... 
Let's see how long that really takes. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008. So like eight seconds? Not that bad if you ask me. Um, now that's like the bare minimum. If you can just do that every day, trust me, you know, you're going to save yourself a lot of heartache later on, especially when you, when you go to clean it. If you've ever had that experience where you've waited a long time to clean your horn and then you finally do clean it and it just feels like a different instrument, well, it's because it is. It, now it's back to its original size and you had it down to probably a medium or small bore. Um, I'm sure some of the repair guys are going to roast me in the comments for saying that, but whatever. Um, go ahead. <laughs> um, in any case, so lead pipe tuning slide mouthpiece. Keep them clean. If you want to take it a step further, okay, take off your first valve slide. Hit it with the snake. Again, just takes, like, what was that? Two seconds? Second valve slide. Hit it with the snake. You're not going to hurt it. And then third valve slide, hit it with the snake. One and two, done. So now I've done all the slides of my horn. Now granted, I didn't get, I didn't get the part of the slides that are like connected to the trumpet, um, but I did get everything else, all the external stuff. Um, and we're just talking about like quick clean. So let's see, we had eight seconds for the lead pipe and tuning slide, probably another two seconds for the mouthpiece. So we got 10 seconds total invested, maybe 12 if you count like disassembly. Everyone's got 12 seconds, usually. So if that's all you do in between cleanings, your trumpet's going to be in much better shape. I actually did an experiment and I just used this for like a year. Okay, I don't know if it was a year. Maybe that's gross. But for a long time, and my trumpet was very, very clean, surprisingly. I finally did give it a bath and I, I did get some interesting things out of it because you know that's not it's not perfect okay but man it's a lot better than how I used to be with my horns you know and I try and do this all the time just to be real consistent now if you want to be a little fancier get this guy right here the brass saver this thing is awesome I like this because it not only cleans out but it also dries out the slides which is great. And, and it comes with a little rod too with, with some brushes on it that you can get all the other tubes. Um, I don't use it. I know I should, but I don't. Um, I actually had a bad experience with it. I don't want to roast Brass Saver because you know I, I think their product is, is wonderful. Um, but I actually damaged my valves using that. So it just kind of scared me away. So in any case, if you notice with this guy, it just it just pulls all the way through and it dries out the slide, which is awesome. So you can see my slide, probably hard to get the light in there, but come on, focus camera. But there you go. You can see it's, it's very clean. Um, and then at the same time, again, it's like anywhere you can fit this little, this little end, that's going to go, it's going to pull the brush through. So just going to drop that down the tuning, not the tuning slide, the lead pipe. And then pull that through and probably be able to see that a little bit super duper clean now granted this horn did have a bath recently but I've played it a bunch since and uh, you know I have not been perfect you know I, I certainly drink coffee you know I'm teaching I'm practicing you know I eat my meals you should really brush your teeth before you play. I don't. I should. And I shouldn't be admitting it to the internet, but here. You heard it here first. Sorry. Um, the other thing that's great about the brass saver, just real quick, you can take off any of the slides. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the third valve slide. And if you've ever given your horn a bath, you know like getting this little turn here is like next to impossible. But with the brass saver, no worries. You just fit that right through there. And then you can just pull the whole thing through. And again, my buddy Walt, I saw him do this first. And uh, you're awesome, Walt. If you're watching this, thanks for the tip. And really, like, I've noticed so much more consistency out of my equipment. Um, it's just nice knowing that, like, because obviously, like, stuff changes with us. You know, our lips may feel 
puffy or they may feel great. Who knows? Like every day is a new day, but at least if the trumpet can be the same, then we don't have to worry about that. Check it out. First valve slide. Boom. Right through. No problem. Check it out. Second valve slide. Normally, I would have been done already, but I just wanted to show this to you all so that there's no questions. Because a lot of my students ask about this. There we go. So, you want to take it a step further? Absolutely. Don't forget, it's also a really good idea to check under the, uh, what do you call these, the bottom caps. Um, and, and what I like to do is just kind of get a microfiber towel or, or really any kind of a cloth and if you can get in there, you know, really, see, I got a lot of gunk out of there. And, and again, I, I'm really clean with this horn. But, you know, the, the stuff builds up pretty quickly. So, you know, it's a good idea to get in there and just clean them out. Like once a week if you can, uh, or, or once every couple of weeks. Ooh, that one's nasty. Look at that. That is crazy. It didn't even look dirty. That's the thing, you know. Um, I'll do the first one. Let's see what's lurking for us here. See, it doesn't even look that bad to me. You know, it's it's fairly clean. But once we get get this clean towel on there, you'll see. And so I kind of bunch it up and, and clean the threads. See, a lot of junk. And, uh, and I also give the trumpet a little wipe just right down there to kind of clean out the bottom of the casing. Because it's important to keep your valves clean as well as oiled. So, again, you want to take it to the next level? Let's take it to the next level. Spitballs. These things are great. I love these. Now, not responsible if you get it stuck in your horn. That's on you. But for me, these work great. Um, so they're, they're a little... I don't want to spill any here. But they're kind of in like a little... I think it's like a rubbing alcohol kind of based or water-based solution. I don't know. Uh, so you're going to need like a pencil or, or something, like a little rod. So I just like to take one out. And I kind of squeeze it, let a little of the juice get into my horn there. And then I'll put it down about that far. You know, that, that far of a pencil. And this is the fun part. I recommend you get one of these. I mean, you could use a paper towel or whatever. I just like to use a microfiber because they're, they're awesome. Um, and then, uh, so I'll kind of just hold it at the end here and just give it a good, a good blast. And as you can see, there's a little bit of juice coming out of the bell there. And, uh, look at how clean that is. So that, that's a, a real testament to how clean I've kept the lead pipe and tuning slide. Um, but what this does is it gets into this little bend here. And that's good. And it also gets into all the valves. So they say you're, you should use a clean one each time. I usually use mine twice. So once I've, once I've blown it through once, I'll kind of go again. I'll push down the valves. And I'll give it another good, good blow. Now this time I got some junk. And you'll see it is no longer bright yellow. It's, it's a darker color now. And that's usually where I'll stop. If... You know, if I got a bunch of chunky stuff flying out of the horn, um, you know, at that point, I, I may get another spitball and, and do it again, you know, if it's been, if it's been a while. And, and I like to have the microfiber just so I can clean the bell out, because like I said, you're going to get a lot of this juice coming out. And I, I'll usually give it a couple, couple more blasts just to kind of get any remaining juice out of there. Um, now, kind of part two to this, uh, now we got this kind of everything wet on the inside. So for me, and you can do what you want, you can end there. Um, but what I like to do is uh, I'll then take the valves out and, and throw some oil on them. So, so I'll, I'll give them a good wipe. So I'll, I'll pull each one out. And I don't know if you can see, it's usually a little wet and you'll see like a lot of kind of a lot of residue there, you know, that it kind of kicks up. And you can see on the towel there. Yeah, there we go. So I'll give it a good wipe. Valve number two, same thing. 
valve number three. And again, just kind of get in there, just wipe it down really well. In addition to keeping them oiled, keep them clean. And uh, it's also a good idea to kind of inspect the valve ports and see if there's any, you know, a lot of times you're going to see kind of some green flaky stuff building up. And uh, of course, if you're planning on giving it a bath soon, you know, definitely do that. But you can also just take your snake and just very carefully get through each one of these ports, you know, on your, on your valve just to make sure that, that you're getting all of that nice and clean. Uh, in my case, these are already pretty clean, so I don't, I don't really need to do that. But, you know, it's certainly not going to hurt anything. And then uh, I just give it a good wipe with my, with my microfiber so that I make sure, like, nothing's stuck on there. So, um, hopefully you've all seen my oiling the valves video, so I'm not really going to talk about, about this portion. But I'm just going to do it in real time so you can see... Uh, and now that I've kind of shaken things up, I like to just kind of jostle them about a little bit just to get, you know, good oil coverage on everything. So in a future video, I'm going to cover... Um, there we go. It feels so much better. And, uh, and again, like really good to make sure before you put your horn away um, that it's nice and clean and dry. And, uh, you know, it's also a good time to, you know, grease the slides and all of that good stuff. And, uh, and you know, if you have your microfiber out, it's a good idea to just kind of give the horn a good wipe down. Um, I'm lucky my hands aren't very acidic, so I don't eat through silver very fast. But I, I've seen friends just, you know, really quickly they'll eat through the silver. Um, and the best thing you can do is, like, when you're done playing, just wipe off all the fingerprints you know anywhere that you've touched with your bare hands just wipe it off with a cloth um, soft cloth like like this i love the microfibers they're just great uh, you can get them anywhere <clears throat> i've seen them at the dollar store certainly at costco uh, autozone just anywhere or just like a soft t-shirt or, or rag or whatever that works great now if you want to like do a quick a quick shine uh, and you have a silver instrument. If you have a lacquer instrument, there's not a lot you can do. You can spray it with some uh, pledge, like some furniture polish, then wipe it off. That's going to condition the lacquer, which is great. Um, but uh, if you have silver, you can use a treated cloth. And this is a, it's an old school Selmer uh, polishing cloth for silver and nickel plated finishes. And it's really simple. You just just get in there and and get it clean, you know. Um, just rub it till it shines. It's, it's great. And, uh, you know, I like to do this once every couple of weeks, maybe once a month, or, you know, if I'm just, you know, if I just want to, <laughs> um, if you want to use like some silver polish, uh, which I recommend the, uh, Haggerty silversmith polish is really awesome. It stinks. I don't know what they put in it. It's disgusting. Um, but you put just a thin layer on your horn, let it dry, wait a little bit, and then, uh, and then buff it off with a clean towel. And, uh, that stuff is awesome. I mean, it, your shine is going to last so long, uh, you may not even need to, need to do this. So I really need to treat this horn with that. Um, but in the meantime, it looks pretty good now. You can see, and then sometimes I'll kind of follow up the uh, silver cloth with, uh, with the microfiber because it's going to take off some of the powdery kind of residue that the treated cloth leaves behind. So, and I, you can see my fingers have kind of turned a little dark from that cloth. Um, but yeah, now my horn is pretty clean on the inside and the out. Uh, the outside, the out. I don't know what that means. Uh, in any case, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please share it with any students that you think might... Uh, might really need to know this information. Um, I hope all my students can watch this. And most importantly, start doing it. Because, uh, man, I just hate, I just hate smelling a dirty horn. Ooh, it's so nasty. And after you see that, uh, that video, whew, you're going to want to wash your horn all the time. 
Um, so in any case, in a future video, I'm planning on doing like a full teardown and cleaning. Um, and I know there are a lot of videos online about that. I just want to offer kind of my thoughts on the process and how I do it. So if you found this helpful, you know, please share it, uh, drop a comment below. If you have some favorite, you know, products or, uh, cleaning tips that, that maybe I'm not thinking of, uh, you know, I would love to hear from you. So anyway, I hope that helps and, uh, I will see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.